Hey guys, this is a video about add-on development with Blender 2.8 and the Visual Studio Code extension that was made by a fellow developer, Jacques Lucke. What you need for this is the latest Blender 2.8 build, you can get it here from this page. My OS is Windows, but you can also get it for Mac OS or Linux. After that I open Visual Studio Code, there was an update that I installed as well and after that I search for the extension Blender Development. Here I found it, the icon is still in development and on the first page you can read a short introduction to this extension. For example how to create new add-ons, how to continue developing existing ones with this extension, some info about script tools but let's jump right into the extension and install it to see it in action. After installing I reloaded Visual Studio Code to activate the extension and then I press Ctrl, Shift and P and type in Blender and then you can see the features, for example creating a new add-on. After that I can choose a folder for the new add-on that I'm going to create and I choose this folder that I already created called test add-on. After that I have to define the add-on's name, then the name of the add-on's author, that's me, JNM, and then I open the add-on's folder in Visual Studio Code And then you can see the init file of this new add-on, this test add-on, that we created for Blender 2.8. Ok, what you can do as well is to open an existing add-on. So again, open the folder for this add-on. And I open the folder of my Blender add-on FastCov for version 2.8, let's see if we can load it. And here's the init file of the add-on FastCov and the next step is to start Blender. So I press Ctrl, Shift and P. Search for the option Start Blender and select it. Then you have to select the Blender executable and this is the latest version that I just installed. And what happens now is that Blender is started and the add-on that I opened in Visual Studio Code is loaded. Now press M because the FastCraft panel can be found in the sidebar and here it is and we can change it now with Visual Studio Code. I move the Blender application now to my second screen and then I bring it again into view as an overlay. Ok, now let's change something in the code, for example a text of a button that is displayed in the FastCraft panel. I change the text bevel object now to bevel objects and then I use the feature reload add-ons of the extension and you will see the modification immediately after reloading the add-on. Ok, the next thing that I want to show you is debugging and this is a really amazing feature. I set a breakpoint here in the execute method that is called when the bevel object operation is executed. This is when this bevel object button is pressed. So I press it and look at this, the breakpoint is hit and we can start debugging this code. You can press F10 or hit this button to step over the active line. And when I hover over this variable active object now, you can see the debugging information. So that's really great, but there is more to it. You can also use conditional breakpoints. Let me show you an example. I set a breakpoint here, but I want this breakpoint to be hit only when the value of the method variable is difference. So I added the breakpoint to define the condition. And the condition is that the method variable should be equal to the string difference. Ok, now I execute a union operation and the breakpoint isn't hit. Then I undo this and execute a difference operation and now the breakpoint is hit because the method is difference. Conditional breakpoints can be very helpful, I will come up with a tutorial about this so that beginners to debugging also know what I'm talking about. Guys, I'm so happy that this extension is available, 
Thanks a lot to Jacques for developing it. I love it, I use it, it's a great help. If you like this channel then don't forget to subscribe and if you want to support me, consider being my patron, this would really help me creating more tutorials like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.